I'm Zella. Alrighty guys, welcome back. I'm here with Rebecca Wilson from Rebecca Wilson Nutrition, talking all things nutrition. Um, we're answering questions here from our viewers, and we've got a question here from Peter. Uh, the question is, I started following a low carbohydrate, high fat regime at the beginning of 2016, and kept my gross carbs down to less than 50 grams a day, which is quite low. Yeah. Um, during this period, he says he lost 12 kgs without feeling hungry. Uh, now he just goes biking with just drinking water. Um, the adaptation to burning fats and ketones rather than glucose took me about two weeks, he reckons. Um, no worries about bonking, about eating gels, uh, from getting any other energy sources. And he says blood markers all are fine. So it sounds like a great thing. His question is, why aren't more nutritionists <laughs> or dietitians recommending this approach to eating? Um, yeah, the low carb, high fat, I'm not sure I get that the right way, yeah. um, is definitely growing um, in popularity. Um, before we kind of go into the nuts and bolts of it, I think it's really important just to take a step back and kind of look at the broad picture of, yeah, and, of dietary sure. trends. And, and although low carb, high fat is, is being kind of bolstered as this new kind of um, new phenomenon and this amazing thing. Um, if we look back at the trends over the past 30 years, it, it has been and gone, the concept has come and gone. So it's pretty much as Atkins um, remodeled and it definitely grew and, and dropped off in popularity. Yeah. Um, so it is important to, to just put it into context that it isn't this amazingly new revolutionary thing. Um, and there has been a lot of research um, done in this area, particularly in, in athletes and um, in endurance athletes. Because when you think about it, we've got three major macronutrients, yes. carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Yeah. And there's only certain ways, I guess, you could plate them up to change how people eat them. Yeah. You know, you can only eat these, this one, or you can't eat this one, or you eat all of them, or and diet, these so, ones are bad, these ones yeah. are good. <laughs> and there's a, there's a huge amount of money in the industry as mm. well, and then, you know, um, you can tell... Just by walking into a, a bookshop or looking on Amazon, watch, you know, what's it on trend at the moment, you know, this one's at the low carb, high fat recipe books and, and how to do it and, and all those sorts of things. Um, and it, it's, it is really easy to kind of get sucked in and, and um, it's just, yeah, as I say, just putting it into context. And also, um, when it comes to athletes, thinking about what's your ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. um, is it weight loss or, or is it performance? Yep. Um, so, Peter here says he, that, he, that he rides his bike. Um, and he can only do it on water. It doesn't say how fast he can ride his bike or how far he rides his bike or how often he does it. So there's a lot of people, I think, pose, not pose as athletes, but think of themselves as athletes because they do you know, maybe some local racing or whatever. But when we actually think about it, they're getting the sort of normal level of exercise versus looking at high performance, yeah. And that's a really important point is um, what exercise are you doing? Um, so if you're... You know, only plodding along at kind of a you know a steady intensity, so sub maximal intensity um, for you know 30, 60 minutes, um, or, or even longer. Then you know um, your body will, will be able to use fat as a mm -hmm. fuel source. Unfortunately, um, by all means, I would love if I could tap into my fat stores um, in racing um, and use all of that pretty mm -hmm. much you know indefinite supply that's there um, to fuel me through an Ironman, but. As soon as we kind of the intensity of the exercise increases and um, the duration, as we do start to rely a lot on carbohydrate, um, and you know we've got a limited supply um, in our muscles, so we do need to be um, fueling up well before taking it on mm -hmm. during. Um, yeah, so as far as the the low carb, high fat diet goes for performance, there's not a lot of research there um, in competitive athletes and competitive endurance athletes for performance enhancements. Yeah. Um, but if you're an athlete that, that is going to tick along at sub maximum intensity for a long period of time, then by all means, you know, fat adapting yourself, um, it may, it may um, be beneficial. I'm not for saying sure. it is, but may. So you could get someone say like an like an Ironman or even you know a marathon runner that thinks that you know this is an endurance activity still, and if they were to get themselves fat adapted, then if they were to compete in their race in say the fat burning zone, they'd have to be going so slowly that. It, they wouldn't perform very well. Yep. So if they wanted to go at a race intensity, they're going to have to have some carbohydrate in there. Exactly. And that's the thing with racing as well is, um, I guess Ironman's kind of being, you know, you think of it as that steady state, long, intensive endurance mm. exercise. But, you know, there's times in that those races that, you know, you're 
um, running up a hill or you know you're trying to run someone down or you know sprint someone down on the bike um, start of the swim you know definitely hit the anaerobic state um, so it's those times during the race that, that carbohydrate is, is that fuel you're going to use a mixture over the race your body is made to use a mixture of car- uh, carbohydrates fat mm. and, and even protein as a fuel um, but carbohydrate in those you know higher intensity endurance exercises is the is going to be the performance limiting one there and I think there's um, some research out there that shows that one of the main predictors of Ironman performance is carbohydrate intake those that consume the most carbohydrate finish the fastest yeah yeah so there is a lot of research that supports carbohydrate Mm. intake before and during um for performance um and there is again when it comes to that low carb high fat there's so many different ways of doing it out there Mm. um there's no one definition and that's one thing to to bear in mind when you're kind of reading facebook posts and and, you know people's websites that are like this is the best thing this is the no this is what everyone should be doing, why is everyone mm-hmm. doing it, is what are they actually doing? Are they actually down at less than 50 grams of carbohydrate a day and, and getting their results on that? Or are they actually down at that during training, but then during racing they're eating carbohydrate? So um, there's lots of different ways of doing mm-hmm, it. So sure. it's really hard to compare in contrast. Um, with the likes of the training low, racing high, which is doing um, high fat during training, high carb during racing, the thing about that, and the thing that concerns me about that, is when you fat adapt yourself, you reduce your ability to use carbohydrate. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we've said, when it gets into racing, carbohydrate is that one that's going to, yep. you know, determine performance. So, if you've got to a point where yes, you're a good fat burner, but you can't actually burn carbohydrate very well, then when it gets to race day, are you going to perform? Mm-hmm. Um, and as well. If you go from eating lots of fat during training to lots of carb during racing, how's your gut going to handle that? Because yeah, um, right. that's a big thing with with um, any sport is making sure that you train your gut mm-hmm. to what you're going to race it sure. as well. So yeah, it seems like there's a lot of people, like a lot of anecdotal evidence around how good this stuff is. And in my experience, when you start to dig a little deeper of people that are doing low carbohydrate, high fat diets, is that it doesn't really, that's not really what they're actually doing. Yeah. What's your experience with that? Um, it, yeah, it's what I said before, when you kind of look out there, there's a lot of different definitions of what people are doing. Um, and, you know, you'll get people that'll say, I'm doing low carb, high fat, and when you mm-hmm. peel it back, they're actually eating, you know, when you look at it, the amount of carbohydrate that we would recommend um, during that type of exercise that mm-hmm. they're doing or that period of their training block. Yeah. So what the current recommendations are um it's not high carbohydrate all day every day um definitely not it's more of that nutrient periodization which sounds really complex Mm -hmm. but basically just like you periodize a training program it's you periodize your nutrition around that as well and there may be periods in that training year that a higher fat lower carb um diet could be used Mm -hmm. um for you know increasing your metabolic flexibility so ability to burn you know fat as well as maintaining that carbohydrate usage Mm -hmm. Um, and then also during heavy training loads or race time, getting that carbohydrate and making sure you're getting enough. I know at least three examples of athletes that I've been working with that have gone to a nutritionist to get advice, and they've gone to the same nutritionist, and it's always they bang on pretty hard about this low carbohydrate, high fat diet, and it always seems to be the same result with them. It it excites them to get get the ball rolling. Um, and then things usually go relatively well for a couple of weeks, and then they start really struggling with their energy and the ability to train, and all their training sessions end up going really poorly, and then they usually end up very sick, um, you know, like colds, flus, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> That's been my experience with it. Um, and same as well, right. and that's the thing as well, is that your body is really adaptive. So mm. in that initial kind of um, couple of weeks, as you say, for some people it could be a little bit longer, yeah. they will, um, you know, they will start, your body will, will adapt, you will start, maybe it's mental, maybe it, it is something physiologically mm. happening, you will start to respond. And that almost positively reinforces that. So you're like, oh, yeah, this is going really well, tell everyone else about it. Um, and then your body can only adapt so far and then it will start to struggle. So carbohydrate, brain mm. fuel, okay? Yep. So it's our brain's preferred fuel source. Uh, we can't use that up there. Um, we need carbohydrate. Also, immune function can be compromised with mm-hmm. lower carbohydrate intakes as well. And if you're an athlete and you're sick, 
you're not going to be training to the intensity yeah. that you want and you've got to think long-term goals performance and if you're spending you know a week or something recovering from from illness then that's a week that you're not getting good effective training awesome i think it flows on quite nicely to our um question here about i'm not even too sure who it's from but says um can eating only in not in a nine hour period and not eating in the remaining 15 hours of the day have a positive effect on your endurance, i.e. can it boost endurance performance? Um, I did hear something, but did not research it that deeply. <laughs> Good. Um, I, it could be interesting, um, they say, and what I'm doing now, without having uh, researched it deeply, is that they're trying to have their last meal at 6pm, and then breakfast at 7.30am, and not binging after dinner at all. And on the weekends, they try and have breakfast around 9 a.m. Does that mean they're not eating during the night time, but eating during the day? That sounds like a normal dietary pattern. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, what is, what's the goal there? Is it weight mm. loss or is it performance? So for, for athletes or in general, anyone trying to lose weight, we do tend to not recommend you know, eating, to, you know, eating after dinner or definitely yeah. binging after dinner because you know, that's food that's going in and you know, you're less active at that end of the day mm. and you're going to bed. Um, athletes, again, it depends on, on what their training goals are, their yeah. body comp goals, um, and where they are in their training cycle. So sometimes some athletes will be getting them to have a, a really good protein-rich supper um, before bed, um, whereas other times, if it's a, a, weight, a body composition thing we're working on, we may say try not mm. to eat after dinner. Yeah. As far as that question, I think, is angled is more at the idea of that fasting, yeah, intermittent, um, fasting. intermittent fasting, rather than there's lots of different fasting diets out there, um, and there is a bit of research building around them. In athletes, the most or the majority of our research is around um, religious um, mm -hmm. fasting, and um, they've found that you know during that period of time, there's no changes in weight and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of other things going on in religious fasts rather than just, you know, eating sure. every day. I think the most important thing about a, a diet, and I do hate using the word diet, but I mean just what we're eating is, yep. does it fit in with your lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know? Um, does it still allow you to be social? Does it, um, or does it hinder you? Does it mean, you know, you go to, you can't go to a restaurant and have breakfast with a friend before a certain time? Yeah. Or, you know, you can't um, order something off the menu because mm -hmm. it doesn't fit in with your dietary practices. Yep. Um because yeah, you're an athlete and that might be a priority, but you're also, you know, you're a person and yeah, <laughs> it's the only part of a family, part of a relationship. So um, as far as fasting alone um, goes, it's, it's similar to the, the low carb, high fat, is there's not a lot mm. of research supporting performance with it. My concern um, is around those long periods of time without nutrition is what effect it's going to have um, on your metabolism, yep. um, but also on your muscle mass. Um, mm. Once we go a long period of time without food, as your body starts to pull it out of, of your stores, yep, your fat, but also your muscle in, in your bones to fuel itself. Brilliant. So muscles are pretty important for athletes. Yeah, Don't exactly, right. going anywhere. exactly right. Um, and then I guess this is one part just here. Why aren't more nutritionists or dietitians recommending um, low carbohydrate, high fat. There are some that bang on about it, you know, very loudly, and then others that don't at all. And intermittent fasting. Why aren't there more of you recommending? <laughs> so the simple answer is the evidence is there. Mm -hmm. um, and as I mentioned um, in that first um, podcast that we did around dietitians versus nutritionists, yep. second podcast, um, is that as a dietitian, uh, I'm bound by evidence-based practice, and I don't mean that that means um, you know, like there's a little bit of flexibility there, and mm. um, obviously we use evidence-based to guide. To, to um, guide what we what we do with athletes um, and mould it to, to the individual. Mm -hmm. But as far as, as I said, the low carb by fat and the fasting, the, the research just isn't there. Um, the, those performance enhancements haven't been seen um, in the research setting. Would there be a time or a population that you would use low carbohydrate, high fat, or in a specific case? Um, as far as... There is growing research around um, like diabetes and, and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, as far as weight loss goes, um, basically any diet that, that reduces calories, um, whether it's low carb, high fat or um, fasting, will result in weight loss um, mm -hmm. because it's going to have that, that energy deficit. Um, in the athlete setting, it may be um, at a particular time in that training block, maybe early on, not in that competitive season, um, where you may look at doing a lower carbohydrate intake to, okay. to stimulate some of those adaptations. But 
as I said, it's that nutrient periodization mm. rather than chronically one or the other. Yeah. You know, our bodies are burnt to are built to burn different fuels. Um, you know, let's not compromise one at the sake of another. And it really comes back down to like having all these different tools in your toolkit that you can use on individual cases. Where versus just a blanket approach to everybody. Exactly, and also doing it under direction guidance. So no. um, there's so much information out there, so much information on the internet, and you can get lost and you can pick and choose from different people's um, opinions and, and recommendations and quite often end up doing something yep. that's not at all um, productive. So I think getting guidance um, is really important um, and working closely with sports dietitians and, and coaches and things like that. Um, Really. If you've got any <laughs> comments um, or questions about low carbohydrate, high fat or intermittent fasting, feel free to post them below and we'll hit pics with them uh, at a later date.